Mr. Beast got his first 100,000 followers on, on YouTube with an iPhone 5, nothing else, right? So don't tell me, oh, I've got to save it. You don't, you don't need this gear. I'm just sharing with you in case you're interested because I'm, because I love that stuff, right? But all you, I mean, I, a ton of my videos on my YouTube channel, Jones on Collective, shot with my phone, nobody cares. I mix and match, I use my good camera with my iPhone and nobody cares, nobody notices. Use audio from here with audio from here and audio from here all the time. Nobody cares, like it, it doesn't matter. It just makes it more fun. Trevor, welcome to, uh, to our time together today and certainly appreciate you being here. Thank you, Ryan. I'm super excited, dude. I, I, I love video and I love, love talking about it. So everybody, you know, feel free to ask questions during this thing. And if we go over a little bit with questions, whatever, that's totally fine. How much time do we have? What are you thinking? Usually we're 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, you know, uh, we usually don't press push too much past that, but All right. are you, are you good for, uh, for that today? Yep. Totally. Awesome. You know, the first question that I have is a little bit about your background, because what took you from, you know, Hollywood to real estate? And I'm sure you've been asked this before, but, you know, do but, tell. Yeah, I will tell. So I was in entertainment industry for 18 years. And for the last eight of those years, I worked for a company who's called Soapbox Films and their major client was was Disney and Marvel. So I was literally working on the biggest movies in the world, you know, like doing marketing commercials for, you know, Thor and Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. And also, you know, so I got this mic, I also did some voiceover sometimes for those TV spots and sometimes for other things, a couple audio books and stuff I did voiceover, you know, and, and it was a great gig, but towards the end of it, I was like, you know, I'm sitting in a 10 by 10 office and I'm, you're working on these big movies, but it wasn't that fulfilling. You would think like, wow, you're watching Thor Ragnarok a year before it comes out, even in, you know, before they, you know, they changed a bunch of things before it was released. It's like, it's kind of cool stuff, but you know, you're sitting in an office all day and you're, and I'm listening to a guy that's like 10 or 15 years younger than me that's telling me what I, you know, when I can come in when I can leave and I'm answering to somebody, I didn't, I didn't like working for somebody else. I'm more the independent guy. Even, even as a kid, when I was like, you know, some people like do sports. Like I, I did soccer when I was eight and then I was done for the rest of my life. Cause like, I don't have to go on your schedule to go kick a ball around or do things when I want to do. Things, right. And so I got my real estate license a couple years, I don't know, a year or two before I left. And my wife was working part-time in real estate. And I was, we say we're a team of like 1.2. I'd help with video and do a little bit. And she did all of the actual work. Mm. And, and then September 17, no, September 21, 2017, they called me to the office. Now they could tell I'd been called in a couple of times for like, Hey, Trevor, you're uh, we need you to put a little more into this. They could tell that I was kind of a little bit checked out, you know? And so when things started, you know, going all digital and Netflix -y and everything, things started slowing down a little bit. They let me go. I got laid off or fired later. I'm still not sure if I was fired or laid off. I told myself laid off. Then I looked at the document read and it's like, actually, you were fired. Weren't you? <laughs> you know? And so I was planning on leaving the industry probably within six months anyway, cause I wanted to work for myself. And cause I, you know, I was making you know, 170 or 80 grand a year. It was like a good job, but, it, but I was capped. I'd say, Hey, how about a raise? Like, that's all we're going to pay here. That's all our business model will allow. That's all we're going to pay you. I'm like, that's I'm, I'm a driven entrepreneur type A kind of guy. And so I was kind of checked out. So I got I got fired, dude. That's why I left. And I drove home. I called my wife. I'm like, Hey, guess what, Leela? She's like, you got laid off. Like, yep. And she was like, <gasps> she was like way stressed out. And I'm like, woohoo, kind of, but they gave me a month or two of severance, but we didn't have any savings really. It was like, so it was pretty stressful times. So we just went all in on real estate. I didn't even look for another job. And I'd been, I was laid off once before that and didn't even, you know, I got another job within a month. You know, it's not a big deal to get, a, well, now it might be actually with COVID, but sure, then sure. I could have gotten another job pretty quickly because I, you know, got the skill set. And, but I didn't even look, not even for one second that I looked, didn't even consider working for somebody else again, because I wanted to work for myself. And so we started off doing, you know, I started, you know, making videos, but I, even though I had a background as a Hollywood editor, I wasn't on camera talent. When you're in Hollywood, you do one thing. Like I just edit, I've got a producer, I got a sound guy and a graphics guy and everybody else. I got 10 layers up the Disney food chain that looks at it and tells me what to do. And but when you're making videos for yourself, you are everything conceptualized. You got to write it, edit, script it, star in it, record yourself. Like right now, how do I make this look good, you know, on a webinar with me by myself without a whole crew? Like I wasn't part of the production. We did production. We'd like interview Johnny Depp or all the Avengers guys because we had these kids. Do any of you guys have 
Sarah, Lisa, Johanna, Brad, Matt, any of you guys have kids? You get heard of you, you have you ever watched Disney Channel or Disney XD? And there's these kids on there. I don't know if they're even on anymore. They're called the Movie Surfers. You guys ever heard of the Movie Surfers? Anybody heard of the Movie Surfers? Yeah, there, there's these kids that talk about the movies, and we those guys would interview the the movie stars, and and so we had a big production facility right there. But I was only on set a couple times, uh, so I didn't know that world. I had to teach myself that world. But anyway, we eventually started doing video and figured out what started working. And it's like, oh. This video stuff is great. Let me make videos to sell houses. So, you know, 2017, our GCI was like 175. 2018, my first full-time year in real estate where all we did was open houses and video, no cold calling, no door knocking, none of that stuff. We did like, it was almost $400,000 in GCI because, you know, just getting in front of people, you know, and it wasn't, and it wasn't, and there's different ways you can do video. It's like call to action, call to action, get my list, get my list. But it was more like just being in front of our sphere constantly. And it's like, oh, who do you think of? Well, Trevor and Leela, of course, because they're out there all over the place in video. And, and, and you can do you know, a combination of both those things. Just be in front of people with the right kinds of stuff and be in front of your sphere and, and reach a new audience by doing things correctly, especially on YouTube, which is like, I don't think people realize the gold mine we have with video. Because mm-hmm. most agents are, you know, a lot of agents will start making video and then they just give up. And that you look in your market, I want you to show me any agent in your market when your community that's posted a video per week on YouTube in the last year, there's probably zero of them. So if you are that guy, you can stand out. And I'm going to share with you, a, I'm going to just, I'm going to vomit on you a bunch of things that you can do right now to make your video. If you do all these things, you'll kill it. No, nobody will be able to touch you. Just these things here. And you're like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. There, I got videos on it. There's videos that I got to court, whatever. There's ways you can learn how to do these things. It's not that complicated the biggest thing is to be consistent. The best thing you can do is start today. Don't go, I'm gonna start tomorrow. Let me me read more about it and study and watch a hundred YouTube videos. No, start today making a video. And even if you suck, that's great because people will go, oh, dude, I can tell that you're kind of awkward on camera because it's your first video. And they'll think that's cute. Just own that, man. Be that guy, be who you are. I've got a bunch of people that I follow on YouTube that I love and look up to and I wanna make videos just like them, but dude, Casey Neistat is taken. Like, I'm like, I want to be just like Casey Neistat. It's like, no, you don't. He's, he's taken. Be me. I'm, you know, my own obnoxious guy in my own way. And here's the thing. People will love you or they will not love you. And the people that don't love you, great. Get out of my sphere. Don't watch my stuff. I don't care. You're not my people. It's fine. Be a troll. Post mean comments. You get that. I get I get, I get, I've got some terrible comments and I just share them with my friends and my Facebook group. And we laugh because like, Okay, if somebody's taking time to troll me, they're usually they usually need you know love and attention, and they they're not usually performing high. It's not Elon Musk isn't trolling people, you know. Jeff Bezos isn't trolling people, right? So don't worry about trolls, and you are going to get them, you know. But uh, anyway, that's one long. See, I get, I get excited talking about this. I love I, it, man. I, I, I love it. I love video, guys. I'm telling you, I love it. So so, so here's the thing, you know, and and, and when I look at you know most people are very, very fearful of getting in front of a camera. Yes. If you can just lend some insight to that, number yep. one, because for yep. me, I, I go, oh my gosh, when I see Trevor's videos, like how am I going to start creating videos that look like that? But for many, yep. you know, even getting on the camera first is, is oh, the, totally. the biggest, you know, factor. That's, that's, a, that's one of the number one fears that people have. Like, oh, I'm terrified. First of all, the only one that cares about that is you. So it's all in your head. Like nobody gives a crap. You go on camera, most people are going to watch it. And like, oh, he's like, it's like, nobody cares. Nobody's going to think, oh my gosh, Ryan, what a loser. That guy's on. He think he can be on video. Oh my gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to tell all my friends. Like nobody cares. Number one, it's all in your head. You know, anxiety. Like I have, I actually have diagnosed anxiety, you know, kind of low level stuff. I don't take anything for it anymore, but I've got anxiety and anxiety is just, worrying about something that's probably not going to happen. So you go on camera, what do you think is going to happen? Is somebody going to cut you down and kill you? Are you going to get a disease? Or is somebody going to say a mean comment? Nothing bad is going to happen. You put out you put out a video that's terrible and out of focus and it sounds bad and you say stupid things, you look like an idiot. Nobody cares. That's number one. Number two, the way you get over it is like everything else, you just start. Get on video. And I tell people all this, I don't know if anyone's watching my videos, but I say this all the time. If you want to get started making videos, open up. Open up, see, I get all, I can't even control myself. You j- open up Instagram and post a 15 second Instagram story like, hey, check it out. This is, is it Sarah Backer or Baker? You have too many K's, Sarah. 
Is it Baker? Bacher. Got Bonker. it. Yeah. Bacher. Got it. Okay. It's like, hey, this is Sarah. This is my, fr- and I don't know what you've done before. This is Sarah. This is my first video on YouTube. On, on I don't know what it's called on Instagram stories. And I just want to say, dude, I'm going to be on here every day sharing with you the exciting things that are happening in our community here. So dude, check, check out my stuff, you know, like just something simple like that and just start every day. And if you like, you don't like it, well, it's on Instagram stories. You don't have a following anybody anyway. Nobody's going to watch it to start and it's 15 seconds long and you can redo it. Like, you know what? I did take one that was terrible and do 20 takes until you feel comfortable. Like, oh, that was pretty good. And you can rewatch it. You can like adjust the framing. You can, you know, change your makeup. Oh, my makeup's bad. My hair's bad, whatever. Like nobody cares. Just start. Do, do three Instagram stories every day for a month and then tell me if you're still scared. Just do that. Three Instagram stories every day for 30 days. That's 90 of them. And after a month, you're like, you know what? It's, I'm, I'm looking at my phone. Nobody cares. My mom watches it. It's like, oh, Sarah, you should have combed your hair on the other side. It's like, you know, like nobody cares, right? So you just you just have to start. That's it. Did you, did you know about YouTube, you know, as far as like the power of it before you, you know, like started doing, you know, video for real estate or, or did you just no, lean like, into that? Um. I had been on YouTube. I posted my first YouTube video in 2006. YouTube was launched in 2005 as a dating site. As you guys, I don't know if you know the history, but it was YouTube was supposed to be a dating site and it wasn't working. And people were just posting like random stuff and they're joking around and junk. And so YouTube met a lesson. They're like, oh, nobody cares about having a dating site. They do care about posting pranks and jokes and hanging out with their friends. So YouTube shifted, which is a huge lesson for you. If what you're doing isn't working, shift. So I knew about it and I had a channel. I had, I'd been posting my voiceover videos up there. Like, you know, when I, I'd get a, it's called a finish when you're in Hollywood, when you they'll the prior place, you, you throw out a whole bunch of TV spots and some of them would finish and end up on TV. Right. The last place I was at, it was more like, we need you to make this one. So almost all of them finished. But when I got a finish, I would post it to my channel, but then Marvel and Disney lockdowns, I wasn't posting as much. So that's why the last one was like from guardians of the galaxy on my voiceover channel. And not much after that, but I had that channel. It grew. I just got like 15,000 subscribers. I wasn't really pushing it. It was like, oh, cool. I even monetized. I was making like, you know, five or 700 bucks a year on it, posting Disney's and Marvel's content, which is totally not chill. And eventually they demonetized that channel. Um, but it's, I still got my videos up there. I don't really use it right now. In fact, <laughs> side note, I like, I am live streaming right now my forest. I moved into a forest and I'm live streaming deer and turkeys and raccoons on my voiceover channel just as a test until I get my real channel. It's going to be a, it's a side thing I'm doing for fun. But I didn't really know the power of it. But if you think about it, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world next to Google, which is number one. There are billions of hours watched every single day. There's 500 hours of videos lo- uploaded to YouTube every minute. We used to have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a 30 second TV sh- spot on NBC after prime time. Now for free, for free, we can post unlimited video content and have the potential to reach billions of people and people aren't taking advantage of it. This is like it's magic. Video is everything and YouTube is the place to be. It is the number one platform in the world you need to be on. You have to be on YouTube if you want to stay relevant. You know, you can keep knocking on doors and keep cold calling and sending out mailers if you want. And it, dude, all that stuff works. Everything works if you do it. I just hate it. So I don't do it. So you, you got to get on YouTube. You've got to get on YouTube. It is the most powerful place to grow any business in the world right now. And it's free. So I've always been pretty big on Facebook and what I'll notice is, you know, I post something on Facebook, I get a pile of views. Yep. I just don't feel that they're as relevant because YouTube, like I've got, you know, my podcast about other videos that yep. I just started with it, but it is a slow, slow process. How do you, you dive in? Is it just consistency? Is it running money behind it? Um, you know, what no, it's, well, here's, here's the thing. You use them kind of hand in hand. They're different. They're very different platforms. And, you know, I'll talk about, I was going to, I get a bunch of tips if you want them, but the, the, the bottom line is Facebook, people will come across your stuff through scrolling. It's not a search engine and your friends and family will see it. If you post on your business page, nobody's going to see it unless you pay to promote it. And you might get a hundred or 2000 views in a couple of days on a video you post on Facebook, but 
those people aren't engaged buyers. 2,000 views on Facebook are worth, you know, maybe 20 views on YouTube. So they don't mean anything. If you get somebody to stop and scroll for three seconds, oh, it's a view. Great. Your mom watched three seconds of your video and kept going. So it's, it's just not as valuable, but it is relevant for now business. And if you're you know, if you maybe scale older, like I'm 57, my people might even be more on YouTube in my market, you know, I mean, on, on Facebook. So you can make a full-time living just posting on YouTube and engaging, I'm sorry, on Facebook and engaging. And the, the key is you jump into groups and you provide value. You, just, you don't drop links to your YouTube videos. You never do that. You jump in groups, you provide value and you post your videos natively on Facebook. You upload them to Facebook. Don't post a YouTube link. That that hurts you in, in a bunch of different ways. You upload natively to Facebook and then upload natively to YouTube and work them both. Work one, you know, they work them, work them hand in hand, but they're they're different platforms. And Facebook is good for now business. Post a video. I, you know, post it, engage with it, you know, share it around on Facebook. Maybe share it in a Facebook group if it is appropriate and you have a permission. People will like drop their videos in all the local Facebook groups and they'll get blocked because nobody wants you spamming stuff. It's self-promotion. Um, if you have if you have a some authority in the group because you've been in that group answering questions, providing value, and you're friends with the admin, then say, hey, is it okay if I post this video here and share it that's going to provide value? Um, then then that then that's great. So you can, I mean, I, I heard a speaker when I was with Keller Williams, I went to family reunion, this guy named Kirby, I think, 75% of his business from Facebook. You can totally do it. So mm-hmm. You know, I what what I tell people is get really good at one platform first before you start trying to go. Oh, I need a Twitter, a Pinterest, and YouTube. Take it to be everywhere. It gets overwhelming because there's so much stuff. What you want to do is get really good at one thing. And if you already have a following on Facebook, maybe you work on Facebook first. But ultimately, the area should end up on YouTube. That's what so that's what the long goal just is. just for clarity. And I know you're going to yes. dive into this a little bit further. But when you say post a, a native link, so you're saying don't post a YouTube link on Facebook. You're like Correct. post it what in the comments. Or no, no. Upload your video. Take your whole four ter- four gigabyte file and upload it directly to Facebook, and don't even mention YouTube. Okay. Because well, there's there's a couple reasons. Number one, YouTube and Facebook are competition. So if you're posting the competition on Facebook, they're not going to promote it. It's going to get deprecated if that's the mm-hmm. word. It's going to be you know they're not going to promote it nearly as much. Number two, Facebook loves videos. Their number one favorite thing, maybe live video, number one. And number two, uploading videos, way more than a photo or comments or memes or, that, or you know pictures, memes, any of that junk. Number one is video, video, video. So if you upload a video to Facebook directly, they're going to, oh, it's a video and they're going to share it more. You're going to get a lot more, a lot more action out of that. Mm-hmm. So it's, you totally want to just upload it directly to Facebook and then separately upload it directly to YouTube. Don't drop YouTube links. That hurts. A lot of people do that in groups. Like, yeah, check out my video, check out my little video. And like, and here's the problem. It's going to, another reason that it's going to hurt you is when you drop a YouTube link in your Facebook profile and all your friends and family from around the world that aren't even in your market, they'll never buy a house. You know, some will click on it. They'll go, oh, it's about real estate in in Canada, I live in you know England. I don't I don't care, and so it's going to be a click and a not watch, and it's going to hurt your channel. It actually, right. or it's like, oh, mom, subscribe, but she doesn't care, she doesn't watch it. It hurts you when somebody subscribes to your channel and doesn't watch your videos. That hurts you. You want engaged viewers, and this is this is super important. If you get nothing else out of this, get this. You're better off to have. 10 engaged people that are into your stuff that are in your market than a thousand people that aren't. And some, I had a comment on my channel recently on my, cause I have a channel that is for real estate agents. And I was like, Hey bro, the, maybe the algorithm doesn't want you to grow because I've got, I've got a couple of videos with over hundred thousand views on them on my real, on my channel for realtors. And my last videos are doing, or they're, they're not getting as many views. So I was like, Hey, they don't want you to grow. It's like, no, I've, I have made mistakes knowingly on that channel because I sometimes want to get views. And I, my top video on my channel for realtors is um, like fair use or how to find and download movie clips, like how to use movie clips in your videos and stuff. And I got a ton of views and some of them are from, you know, India and around the world and like kids that are 14 years old that want to know how can I rip off movie clips and use them in my videos, right? Not my market. I want a real estate agent that wants to learn how to make videos. And I, and I get caught up in those vanity metrics. Oh, I want the views. So I'll make more videos for those guys instead of staying in my niche. And so don't worry so much about views. Worry about getting people that are actually in your niche, your target demographic. Awesome. When you look at what people are doing today, and you must observe realtors all over, uh-huh. 
have it has it gotten to be the point where there's still lots of room for anybody in any market oh yes okay oh yeah dude every year somebody says it's too late to get on youtube all the videos have been made all the channels have been taken it's like dude because because most agents are either a doing it wrong or more likely b they give up too soon there is tons of room if you post one video per week on youtube over the next year about your market and your community and you do all the things that I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna blast through real quickly at some point, um, you will be the number one video real estate agent in your market within a year. I can almost guarantee you because nobody else will do that if you stick with it. Consistency is everything. Mm -hmm. Plenty plenty of room, there's always room. There's there's somebody that's creating a channel this month that's gonna have a million subscribers you know, in, you know, in, in two weeks. Or you know, or in six months like that, it happens every year. People always think it's too late. It is. It is not too late. It's the ship hasn't even left the dock yet. Ship and sail still being built. I love it. Well, there's just so many ways. You know, I, I look at it personally for the different things that I'm involved with, and I mean to to see you know realtors doing it the right way is going to be awesome. Yep. Maybe maybe you can take us through now. You know, what should people be posting on on video on YouTube that's going to differentiate and have the, have an impact. Yeah, I mean, that's actually, that's one thing. It's different is better than better. You can either be the best guy or you can be different. And so the best guy might already be, actually, you could be the best guy in your market because for, for our, for a local real estate niche, because, you know, I mean, literally in my last market before I moved, I just moved to Oregon, but in California where I'm licensed, there was one guy that was consistent, you know, besides me out there. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to, it's not hard to, it's not hard to stand out, but what you should be posting are let me just let me just run you through and people can rewatch this let me just run you through the things you need to do right in order um in order to crush it on video can i do that mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of stuff just i'm going to really it's going to be really fast so just and you can rewatch it so you can take notes but number one you have to identify your niche if you're just if you're the realtor for everyone you're the realtor for nobody who's your niche how old are they? What gender are they? What do they watch on TV? Are they conservative? Are they liberal? What do they wear? What TV shows do they watch? What, what books are they reading? What, what social media platforms are they on? And how do you know that? Well, YouTube has something called analytics. I got a video of that on my channel. Number one, and it tells you a ton of stuff. And number two, who have you done business with, right? Who do you associate with? How do you, how do you dress? And then when you are making videos, every video, your entire YouTube channel, everything should be targeted to that person. It's like, oh, I have identified my avatar it is a 52 year old man buying his second house in the town he grew up in and he's upgrading from a five hundred thousand dollar house to an eight hundred thousand dollar house and it's a pool home like you need to be that that specific like and make all your videos for that guy and think about that whenever you make a vision what video is he going to watch and figure out what it is so you've got to identify your avatar and your niche that that person is in if you don't do that you will have failed before you have even started and people will just skip this. Like, oh, I just want to, I just want to sell houses. Like, no, dude, there are 10,000 other agents in your market that just want to sell houses. You've got to identify that guy, take the time, think about it, figure it out. That's number one. Number two, you got to set up your YouTube channel. What you need to do when you set up your channel and most people don't bother doing this is you want to, this is my channel about travel and RV life and stuff. We lived full-time in the RV last year while waiting for a house to get built. But you want your channel to, you got to do all of these things um, right from the get-go. Number one, you want to have channel art that fits, that looks good on all of different platforms. Number two, you want it to immediately speak to your target audience. Whether I've done that on this, nah, maybe not. This is like, this channel's life untethered about, about, you know, untethering from where we used to live and traveling full-time in an RV and, and, and stop and not waiting to live. So we're trying to reflect that here. You want to have it, let them know how often you're posting videos. You want to have one call to, I've got too many here, actually. You want to have one call to action. What's the number one thing you want them to do? And when you set up your channel, you can do this. And it could be with an arrow, click. In fact, let me show you my channel for realtors because that might be a better example of that. And who is this channel for? Create better videos to sell more houses. It's really clear that this is for realtors to sell more houses. And then I have an arrow that's put depending on the size of the thing. And I have one link right here. Here's a free masterclass for realtors. So that's the number one thing I want people to do when they go to this channel. You can have a call to action here that can be click here for my downloadable list of the top 10 communities in my city in Calvary or whatever, right? And number two, you want to have, when somebody goes to your channel, you want to have playlists set up so that they can find things. Like I've got my latest videos here. I've got 
you, tutorials on YouTube. I got Facebook tutorials. I've got stuff about fair use and movie clips. So you can have different playlists set up. Number three, you want to have a channel icon right here, which is going should be your face. It should fill the frame and it should be an expressive face that is pleasing and inviting with you dressed and looking how you want to appear to your target demographic. And number four, I don't know where I am. You want to set up your about section so people know who you are and you want this to be rich with keywords so that your channel can come up. Did you know that when somebody does a search in YouTube, they go up here and they do a search for real estate, they can, your actual channel can come up too. So if this is rich full of keywords and by keywords, I mean words that people in your market are actually searching for, such as Ryan, where are you? What province are you in again, Ryan? Ontario. Ontario. So, you know, Ontario, you know, Ontario top houses to live, Ontario best places to live, Ontario neighborhoods, Ontario communities, Ontario schools used in complete sentences right here. So get your channel set up correctly first. All right. And next let's, let me just, I'm going to kill this stop the share so you can see my face again. And next thing you want to do is create the right kinds of videos. And what are the right kinds of videos? The right kinds of videos are videos that people are actually searching for. Never forget that YouTube is a search engine. People are searching for them. That's where you get engaged buyers and sellers because like, oh, I'm buying and selling a house. I am searching for things about that process. And when you're thinking about that, think about early in the process. If it's, if it's how to sign escrow docs, it's too late. They're an escrow. They're done. They've got an agent, right? But if it's how do I prepare my house to for market in with the with the city name in it? And and by the way, how do you do keyword research? Um, there's a lot of. Did I send you a PDF with some links? Uh, I've just seen seen some in the program. I, I believe already. Okay, I don't know if I sent you one, but I can send you a PDF with some. I thought I emailed you a bit, if not, but I got some links for some stuff. There's some tools, but the basic the basic thing you do to start doing a search is you go to YouTube, go to the search bar and type in Ontario real estate, Ontario homes, Ontario homes for sale. And YouTube will populate a list of the top 10 or 15 most searched terms in your market for those terms. And look at those. Are any of those relevant? Oh, Ontario high school. Maybe you make a video about the Ontario high schools, right? So that's the first place you start to get a little more, to get better at it. There's tools for it. One of them is called TubeBuddy and I'll drop links for that. Um, you know, down here, if you want, if you're interested, they got a free version, which is great to get started. I've got the paid versions. They've got some cool things. So you want to do keyword research before you start making your videos. Um, next, you want to early on in the process. And here's something that everybody misses, especially real estate agents is, do you guys know what thumbnails are? Everybody knows what a thumbnail is, right? When you go to YouTube, you see a still image of every video, right? That's the thumbnail. I can't tell you how important your thumbnail is. It is almost as important as the video itself. You need to make, you need to get good at making thumbnails or pay somebody to make your thumbnails that people will click on. If you're just, uh, what people have done in the past is like, well, in fact, until 2012, YouTube would just pick a thumbnail for you random. And then eventually they gave, you know, higher end creator, you know, people with more subscribers, the ability to put, put their own thumbnails up and now everybody can create their own thumbnails. And that is the number one reason people will click on a video because they'll look at your thumbnail. And just some really basic tips, expressive faces with one other object, you know, whether it's a house or a car or something, you want to create curiosity with your thumbnail. Do you guys, have you guys ever heard of Mr. Beast? Any of you? There's a, there's a kid named Mr. Beast. He's 23 years old. He has 62 million subscribers on YouTube and his videos are, I mean, he'll like give away a million dollars or like he'll open a, a bank and give away free money. And he does crazy stunts like that. Now he didn't always do that. He would start, he like, I would, he would, you guys know who PewDiePie is. Have you ever heard of PewDiePie? Nod your heads if you have. Okay, PewDiePie, he's like the top single YouTuber in the whole world. He's got over 100 million subscribers. So Mr. Beast, one time he goes, I'm going to say PewDiePie 100,000 times. So he got on the camera for like hours and hours. PewDiePie, PewDiePie, PewDiePie. So that was free stuff, right? So he started with dumb stuff like that, but he grew. He's huge. He's not, you know, he's not the, the dude I, I care about following. I'm not his target demographic, but I learned from him. This guy will spend a day or two thinking about his thumbnail in advance before he ever shoots the video. And if he cannot think of an intriguing thumbnail, he won't even shoot the video. And take it from a guy that's probably the fastest growing YouTuber in the world. That is how important your thumbnail is because YouTube cares about 
two things. Well, they care about one thing. They care about money. It's a business. They want to make money, right? How do they make money? They keep people on the platform. How do you keep people on the platform? You get them to click, number one. And number two, you get them to watch lots of video content, right? So your goal, whenever you're making a video is, I need to make my target audience, that niche I've identified, click, and I need to make them watch my entire video. How do you make them click? You put out a killer thumbnail. You spend time thinking about it. And if you don't have graphic, there's a program like Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. It's got templates for creating, for creating thumbnails. You can start there for free. You can pay somebody on five or 10 bucks to make a thumbnail that's, that's probably better than I can make. I'm not a graphic designer. I'm an editor. Remember, we had in my, in my business, we had graphic designers that did all that work for me, right? I mean, I can get around in Photoshop. So I've, I've tried Fiverr guys. I've tried doing my own stuff. Still evolving. But you have to spend time in your thumbnail, all right? So for every video, do that. Number one, you want to create a script. And when I say create a script, I don't mean word for word, read the teleprompter. I've tried that. I've gone through the teleprompter route. And even though I'm a trained voice actor, right? It still looks like I'm reading a freaking teleprompter. Now it does work for some people. Um, and it's kind of a, a nice crutch to go back on and it, and it can work and help you stay on, on task. But for me, what works best over the long fun is outlining a script and just bullet points and then talk like I'm talking to you guys right now. Like I'm not reading a script. I'm just talking to you. So I'm engaging. I can do a little bit of tangents. I can sound like a real human being instead of like, it's like um, outline a script using the perfect script format to make them watch to the end of the video. Watch, watch time on YouTube is number one, is YouTube's number one metric. Like everybody would, everybody would freaking check out, right? Yeah. Um, but the script, here's the format, right? you want to hook them in the first three seconds. Remember, attention spans are non-existent. So hook them in the first three seconds by telling them basically what your thumbnail and title said. Like, hey, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top 10 communities in Ontario. And then hook them. And then you want to tease them in instantly after that. Don't, don't do an intro, man. I used to do intros. You look at my older videos, they all have intros. A lot of agents will go, hey, I spent a thousand dollars. I got a cool intro. It's got music and graphics, sound effects, and it shows me looking all, all baller. It's like, dude, nobody cares about your intro. Skip it. Save the money, right? Did you, people click on a video because they want some meat. So you hook them in the first few seconds, then you tease them. Stick around to the end of this video. I'm going to tell you community number 11. This is a hidden gem in Ontario that almost nobody knows about. And the house just came on the market there that might interest, you know, so you tease them and you got to think about this stuff, right? And then you just dive in. Neighborhood number one. In this video, the homes are ding, ding, ding. And you show them and you give them the information. Now, you can just do talking cat videos like this, right? Which is fine. But if you're out on location, it's even better. Here's the, here's the, the challenge is when you are on location, it's going to take you more time, right? If you're just sitting here busting out videos, then, you know, you can, you can get a lot more out. So there's always that balance. Um, but whatever you can do is fine. If you're just you're talking about them and you pull up some fo photos from your phone or screenshots or steal some stuff from the internet, whatever, on location is better. So, right, hook, tease, meet, get to it immediately. Within like, within 30 seconds max, you should be delivering the thing that they came to your video for. And then at the end, call to action. Um, I am passionate about it here. I can't wait to share with you what I know and help you find the home of your dreams. Just click on the contact information below. I can't wait to help you out. Or Another call to action, dude, I have a list of the top 20 communities on Ontario that has all the details you want to know. Just click that link right up, you know, right down there in the description and get your free download. And then they opt in with a, you know, they opt in, type in their email address and through a program like leadpages.net, um, you can set up a very simple little web page in five minutes where they can download the PDF. And then you, then you have a database of people. So you're gathering leads that way. And I've done, and I've done both things. All right. Sure. Do you get um, do you, do you get people that will you know look to book a viewing of a home or you know to have their house of you know market evaluations like right through YouTube or is this more of an information collection? Um, for me, it's I mean for me, <laughs> like actually we're not even actively selling right now. We're we're in Oregon. I'm not licensed. The wife's working on getting the license there. But when we were doing it, we're like, hey, Trevor, it's it's come list my house because it was a lot of a lot of times my sphere was watching my stuff, you know, and so you know. One of the ones we sold, uh, my pharmacist, he's like, hey, can you come take a look at our house? They didn't interview our agents. We just sold his $1.2 million house. You know, we just show up at his, and you, you just list it and you sell it, you know? So it's both, you know, and some of it's like long-term nurture. And some of it is, and some of it is just, you know, when they're ready, they, they know you're the agent because you're out there all the time. You're in their face all the time, you know, so it's both. Um, next, you want to, 
um, as far as as far as the content in your videos, you want to tell short, relevant stories. Like throughout this video so far, talking to you guys, I've told you lots of little stories about Hollywood and you know my stories and how I've sold that junk. You want to tell short, relevant stories to keep people engaged. The number one goal of any video, of any video you've ever seen on TV, a commercial, anything, is to make them feel something. If you can make somebody feel something, they're going to connect with you, right? And the goal, you've heard, everybody says it, Josh Smith says it, you want people to get to know you, like you, and trust you. And that's your goal of the video, so that they know, like, and trust you. And then you can become like a celebrity. You're putting out a video every week, and they're getting better and better. First one sucks. Six months later, it's like, whoa, you're the rock star out there already. They forget that you're a brand new agent. They got licensed yesterday by six months, and they know you, like, you, trust you, they're going to do business with you. And the way you do that is by telling stories, connection, be a little bit vulnerable, right? Um, yeah. And the other thing is we were talking about be yourself, right? Now, now remember, now, so the next thing you do is after you, if you outline it, you film it. You want to choose it in a location that speaks to your niche, set up a little background at your house. Um, a lot of people do green screen, but I hate green screen. People go, how do you do green screen? Well, I know how to do it and I've done it. You can go to my old YouTube channel, Jones Home Collective and look at our green screen videos. And I think Anything you can do with consumer level gear almost always looks cheesy with a green screen, but some people do it anyway, and they have total success. My buddy Jackson Wilkie, he started out with a GoPro filming green screen and he's freaking killing it. So it works, it's just a preference thing. You know, it makes it, and I found when I was doing green screen, even though I know technically how to do it with consumer gear, it's really hard. I spend more time getting the green to go away than, than, than editing the video. Um, and also, okay, let's go back through filming. You want to have good lighting. Like right now, I just have a $70 little LED light right there. And so the lighting, how does the lighting look? Does it look okay? Great. It's like, it's like fine, right? So, you know, there's no sockets in my eyes. So it's simple. Like just, you can literally just set up a light right next. I mean, there's a, I've got videos on lighting and junk, but just the basics, just have good lighting. If you don't have a light, you can buy cheap, you can buy an umbrella on YouTube for like 30 bucks and it'll look fine. Just set it up over your camera to the side, have the light. The tip is have the light a little bit higher than your camera. So it's coming down on you. If you have shadows going up this way, it's called monster lighting. You don't want monster lighting. You want pretty lighting. If it's right in the middle, it's called butterfly lighting. That's what the, you know, they do for beauty light. And there's all kinds of lighting junk we talk about, but the basic is face are make your face, you know, bright and beautiful and make sure they can see your eyes. That's mm -hmm. huge. That's how you connect with people. Look at the camera. Don't look at yourself. I know a lot of times I'm looking at the, the zoom screen down here, but if I'm looking at the camera, you connect more with people. So make sure you do that. Everybody does this at the beginning. They'll either look at their script and start reading, or they will look at themselves on the screen. And that's, that's a mistake. The other thing you want to do is frame it right. So sorry, Sarah, I'm going to call you out, Sarah Bacher. Um, everybody does what Sarah's doing right now. Look at hers. They do this, they go, oh, I, I should be in the middle of the frame. So they're down here, right? And it's just, that's that's not where you wanna be. You want to just tilt your camera down, Sarah, neek, or sit up and you want your head to be at or near the top of the frame. This is pretty much ideal where I am here, right there, right? So they're much better, Sarah, yes. So framing, and that you just look more professional. Like look at a news channel, you know, unless they're like way far away with the big set and stuff. But when you're doing a talking head video like this, you wanna be frame center. Now you can also go off to the side if you have something over here of relevance. Mm -hmm. What is flashing over there? Um, if you have something over there of, you know, of that, that, that balances you out. Um, but for, you know, for authority and stuff, center of the frames, fine. So frame it right, light it right. And if you don't have a light, sit in front of a window. Windows look great. Window, there's beauty vloggers, whatever. They'll sit in front of a window. It looks better than any light you're going to buy. So sit in front of a window and during most of the day, if there's not harsh sun coming in, it looks amazing as well, right? Next, um, use good audio. Um, right now I'm using an expensive mic, an expensive preamp, but you don't need that. In fact, let me show you what I just bought. And this might be more than you want to spend, but I just bought this finally. And I've got a video that's coming out probably today or tomorrow on this. Um, I've used throughout most of my YouTube career for, I've used a $200 shotgun mic called the Rode Video Mic Pro, which is amazing. The challenge with a shotgun mic, and this is also a shotgun mic right here, a mic that is, a shotgun mic is directional. It points at your mouth. So it sounds great. Like this should sound amazing because it's this close to my mouth right now, right? But the challenge is, if I was across the room in this echoey room, it would sound terrible. Even though it's an expensive mic, it would still sound terrible because it's echoey. The trick to good audio, it doesn't matter if you're using the shotgun mic or your phone, the trick to good audio is have the mic close to your mouth right here. 
how do you do that all the time? What's the trick? Cause like with my shot, what was the, what would be the challenge of me using my shotgun mic on my videos when I'm out in a neighborhood or in a park or a show in town? What's the challenge with that? The challenge is I'd have to have the mic right here. The camera's going to be right in my face, right? Nobody wants to see my face this close to the camera all the time, right? What if I wanted to be walking down the street, 20 feet away from the camera? What do you do? You use something like this. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro 2. And you don't have to, dude, you can use your phone, I'm, but I'm just giving you guys options. The Rode VideoMic True, it is one tran or one receiver and two mics. So if you're interviewing somebody or you're with your spouse, whatever, you can have two mics and with a wireless mic like that, you can just literally just clip it here or use a lavalier to run it up. You just literally clip it here on inside your shirt, you barely see it and boom, you have great audio all the time. Even if you're 200 feet away with this mic, it's gonna record right into your camera and sound freaking amazing. And the advantage of this one is not only does it send it to your camera, it sends it through this thing to your camera. So it records it to your camera on two separate channels. So my wife's little baby voice and my big obnoxious voice, I can fix it when I edit it. So we can actually hear both of us the same. And also these things record to themselves. This is wireless. It's saying it over a 2.4 gigahertz signal. Sometimes your phone will you know, get in the way and it'll mess up. Like, oh no, the audio is ruined. No, it's not. It records a backup right on this thing. So it's like super cool. It's 300 bucks for this set. You never need another mic. You can use your studio on location, whatever sounds great. But that's, if you have the budget, these are great. If all you have is your phone, and that's the other thing, guys, don't get overwhelmed with the, I love gear. Like I love cameras and gear and mics and all that junk. It doesn't matter. PewDiePie, not PewDiePie, um, Mr. Beast got his first 100,000 followers on, on YouTube with an iPhone 5, nothing else. Right. So don't tell me, oh, I've got to save it. You don't, you don't need this. Gear. I'm just sharing with you in case you're interested because I'm, because I love that stuff. Right. But all you, I mean, I, a ton of my videos on my YouTube channel, Jones on Collective, shot with my phone. Nobody cares. I mix and match. I use my good camera with my iPhone and nobody cares. Nobody notices. Use audio from here with audio from here and audio from here all the time. Nobody cares. Like it, do, it doesn't matter. It just makes it more fun. And the, the wireless mics just make it easier, make it convenient. You just clip it on, you go. So that's great. All right. Um, good audio. Um, don't ramble. Now, you got, when you are, we'll talk about, I guess, editing, but when you're, when you're delivering your content, don't ramble, just get to it. And I've done a little bit of rambling here because it's a live event, but don't ramble. And last thing as far as filming is if you can use some B-roll. B-roll just means something. This is A-roll. This is me talking to the camera. Anything but my face when I'm going, hey, top neighborhood, and I'm showing a house. Boom. Oh, they've got beautiful trees. I'm showing a tree. Oh, there's a hot air balloon festival in our community. I'm showing hot air balloons, right? That's called B-roll, anything but your face. A great thing to do that I've started doing recently is cheating. You can go to like storyblocks.com for like 15 or 30 bucks a month and have hundreds of thousands of clips you can just download. They're not going to be your community, most likely, if you're in a big big, you know, problems like Ontario, they'll probably have some stuff. But when you're talking about things, you can show them and it's going to keep it interesting. The thing that makes videos watchable is changing it up. So it's not just your face talking and droning on the whole time, right? Um, make every video for them, not about you. It's not about, hey, I'm the top agent in Ontario. I've sold 600 million houses last year. Dude, I'm the best. Like nobody cares, none of that. And then you want to either edit it or have somebody edit it for you. I've been experimenting with, with guys on, there's, there's a website called onlinejobs.ph. You get guys from the Philippines that let it like really inexpensively. You go to Fiverr and have editors. Um, you know, you'll get very, you'll probably have to try people depending on, on, on what you do. But the, when you edit, people get overwhelmed. Like I'm an editor. So like, I like it and I get picky and I put stuff in there that is way overkill. First of all, you never have to edit. You're like, oh, all this stuff. Oh my gosh, set up the channel, outline, it's, it's too much. You never have to edit if you don't want to. Number one, you can get around that by doing Instagram Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. So kind of the evolution, if you're like, oh, I'm insecure, I would just do Instagram stories for a month. And then I would then I would go to a Facebook Live. It's like, hey, like a, a, a market update. I used to do those and spend time editing. Market updates good for a month. Like here's the market update for, you know, June, 2021. It's like by July, 2021, nobody cares. So it's not a video that's gonna get any value. It's not an evergreen video. So what I would do if I was going to do market updates, I would just do a Facebook Live. Like, 
Hey, every, every month or week or whatever, I jump on Facebook for two minutes and I have some notes. I go, Hey, do you guys know that right now, man, rates are nuts, man. It's You got to jump in. Rates are probably going to go up soon. The feds going to raise rates and houses. Here's what's going on in the market. And just tell them something interesting about the market and do a live video on Facebook. And then you don't have to edit it ever. And then the next evolution would be YouTube live where you're doing videos that are maybe more long, that are more evergreen that have value in a year and in five years, because that's where your long-term business comes from. Um, and you could do a YouTube live if you never want to edit. So you don't ever have to edit. You don't ever have to buy any gear. You could literally, like I am live streaming deer and squirrels 24 seven from my backyard with an iPhone 10 via Wi-Fi right now, you know, so in live, in racking up all kinds of hours, right? But you never, you never need to edit. But if you do want to edit, editing is not complicated at its basic level. What, which program, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've used Avid and Premiere and Final Cut. And right now I'm using Premiere. I've used Filmora. There's lots of programs, whatever the free one is. All you're doing in your editing, you're, oh, this is the good part. This is the bad part. Let me delete the bad part and keep the good part. That's it. Just get rid of the bad parts, keep the good part. You can learn how to do that in an hour with, with any program. If you're like, what program do I use? I don't know. Should I use it on my phone? I hate editing my phone, so I don't recommend it. Fat thumbs. Um, but you can you're on your iPad, but I would recommend a program called Filmora. It's like a hundred bucks and it does everything you'll ever need it to do. Um, if you're not going to be a super mega editor and the beauty of Filmora is it's kind of training wheels for higher end programs. If you ever like really get into it. Um, so don't get overwhelmed with the editing. Just, just delete, delete the bad parts. Um, so speaking of, uh, of overwhelm, this is a lot of information to take yes, in. And, and that was my goal. <laughs> 48, 48, 48 minutes, I think we're at right now. And I'm going, yeah. wow. Yeah. Tell us about your program and how people can learn this stuff, maybe step by step, you know, along the way, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a program. It's called Downing with Video. Um, it's 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 two thousand. I'll just tell you the price. Two thousand dollars online, but I got a code for Ryan where it's four ninety seven, and it's basically all the stuff I'm talking about broken down one step at a time. So instead of like me vomiting everything in one hour, you've got like ten or eleven hours of videos, like fifty videos where I just walk you through all of this stuff: how to research, write, film, edit, and share videos, so you can so you can crush it with video. So if you're interested. You know, you can you can go to letsdwv.com, let letsdwv.com, and enter the code Ryan when you check out, and you get the program. And then you get and you get and one thing that I'm offering for Ryan's people right now, the I have a private Facebook group. It's the only place to have direct access to me, and it's closed right now, so I can take care of the few hundred people that are in there right now. Um, I'm probably gonna open it up soon, but right now I'm open. You know, for anyone that opts into Ryan, I'm gonna give them lifetime access to that. Right, now. it's paid in the past to be as part of the Facebook group. But if you join, like if you use Ryan's code, you can get in, you'll get lifetime access to the course, which isn't normal. Usually you have to pay after a year and you get lifetime access to the Facebook group, which isn't normal because it's not even open right now. Normally it's paid. And in the Facebook group, you can post your videos, ask questions. And I answer all the questions personally, my wife and I do. And you engage with other people that are doing the same thing you are and that are crushing it on video. And it's kind of a, it's a great place to, to go and learn when you have questions. The, the course answer is like, almost every question you'd ever have, but people are like, but what about this? What about this new camera? What about this? Like, that's where you go and you can ask me those questions. And I, and I love answering it and I'll answer. Sometimes I'll just, I'll reply. Sometimes I'll send you a direct message. Sometimes I'll make a video for you. I'll even do a screen share. Like, well, here's how you do that on YouTube or on, on TubeBuddy or whatever. And I'll show people how to do things. So uh, if you want to learn more, that's, that's a great place. And, and um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to share. I, I was shocked when I heard about, you know, pricing for this because usually courses like this can be far more than two grand as well. So for 500 bucks, it's super value. What I'll share with you is that, you know, I just jumped into this about a week ago. Um, I looked at the, the first couple of videos and I just said, this is, you know, a game changer for anybody that wants to get started. And there is just so much value. Uh, highly recommend that you, you look at this closely because this is uh, going to be a big differentiator. We are one to two acquisitions away from this real estate industry of ours being flipped on its head. This is the kind of stuff that we need to be doing right now to differentiate from our competition and from a lot of the disruptions that will continue to happen over time. Yeah, yep. You got, you got to stay relevant, man. I mean, and historically, real estate agents are, are backwards. Like we're the last ones to definitely we're like walking out with pens and papers and throwing calendars and menus cards at, at porches. Like, dude, it's not 1950, you know, it's like, we gotta, we gotta catch up. For sure. Trevor, I want to thank you, man, for taking the time. Uh, so much value in such a, a short, short window of time. I'm going to post 
this all over on my channels. I'm going to make sure it goes into my real estate with purpose group, which has well over a thousand agents in it. We'll get the link for anybody that wants information on the course. And brother, so blessed and thankful that you could be here with us today. And, my pleasure, uh, spend Ryan. Spend some time, man. So thank Ryan. you so much. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.